Would you stand and welcome him? Thanks, Jonathan. How y'all doing tonight? I can tell I'm in the South. I say that in the North and they just stare at me like, what do you, do, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? <laughs> First, I want to invite you to come to Moravian Falls and visit us sometime. Moravian Falls, North Carolina. It was settled in 1753 by the Moravian Church. And uh, Zinzendorf was the head of the Moravian Church at the time. He called for 100 years of 24-7 prayer. Well, a good portion of that 100 years was done right there in Moravian Falls. It kicked the heavens open. There's been an ongoing prayer effort there. Uh, there's, you know, some people say there's a thin veil. There's not even a veil. <laughs> it's so easy to receive. We have a lot of conferences, uh, weekend conferences, and also our main conference, which is the Transformation Summit. We have that at least twice a year, usually in April and in October. And uh, it's, it's a week-long event. It's limited to between 60 and 70. 67, I think, is the most we can take this time. Um, so it's a small group. I'm one of the speakers. Um, Bob Jones, Bob and Bonnie Jones, uh, Larry Randolph, uh, Mahesh and Bonnie Chavda, um, <clears throat> Don Potter, um, Andy Miller. Uh, some of you don't know him. He's involved in inner healing. He's an incredible guy. And Lilo Keller from Switzerland. So um, I think there's a couple of spaces left for this October. It's the third week in October. So we'd love for you all to, to come join us. Also, if you've never been on a ministry trip, missions trip, we go to Colombia, South America, at least twice a year. And we take a team with us. Uh, we just got back a couple of weeks ago. And our team, people that had never even prayed for anybody, saw blind eyes open, deaf ears open, people coming out of wheelchairs, tumors disappearing, everything. It's an amazing, it's an amazing time. So um, we're going in January, in the next trip, end of January. So we'd love to have you go with us on that too. You can check out the information at garyoates.com, G-A-R-Y-O-A-T-E-S.com. I joked around and I said, well, you know, no, uh, Quaker was not related to me because he spells his, his name differently. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, let's get going. Tonight, tonight I want to um, take the mystery out of the supernatural. I want to show you that you're more spiritual than you think you are, that you're seeing more than you think you're seeing. Um, I was raised in a church that taught against all of everything I'm doing right now. I was taught that anything that was supernatural was of the devil. I was taught that, you know, Satan is sitting on my shoulder, whispering in my ear, tempting me to sin. Well, that's true. But I was taught that God doesn't speak to us today anymore like he did in the Bible times. So, you know, we could hear the voice of Satan, but not hear the voice of God. At one point, I signed a statement saying I would not speak in tongues or associate with anybody that did. <laughs> so I've come a long way since that time, but it was a progression. It didn't happen overnight. We're all at different levels of growth. We're all at different levels of, of spiritual maturity. And I pray that this weekend, you're going to take a giant step forward. That's what this is all about. <clears throat> I got an email from a guy and he said, um, I got your DVD, Open My Eyes, Lord. It's really funny. You know, open your, my eyes, open my eyes, Lord. <laughs> I don't know if you got that or you're just being polite. <laughs> anyway, um, my eyes aren't healed yet, but they're on, in process. Okay, but we're talking about spiritual eyes. I got uh, your DVD, Open My Eyes, Lord. I spent three hours with God the other morning asking for his presence and to open my eyes to the spirit world. I had the following experience. Can you tell me if I experienced God's presence? He said, and, and we're going to vote here in just a minute. 
He said, I felt great pressure around my stomach and mostly my chest as if I were being squeezed hard. My whole chest area felt like it was on fire. My heart and lungs felt on fire. With my eyes closed, I saw images with such detail and color. I've never experienced that clarity with my eyes closed. However, most of the images of people were blurry figures, but the color was incredible. The one image that stood out was a blurry person in robes wearing a beautiful bright ring. The ring was solid gold with two humps and with very bright sparkling jewels on it. He says, I want God's presence so bad it hurts. Okay, then he continues. Also, the last four mornings I spent with God asking for his presence and to open my eyes. It's been very dry and nothing happens. I feel sometimes like the Holy Spirit whispers to me, it will happen in God's timing. What do you think? Now, what do you think? Did this guy have an experience of the Lord? Well, what did he think about it? Yeah, he thought, well, that's no, you know, that wasn't, that was just me. I was just making that stuff up, right? We've all done that. We've all been like this guy. You've had experiences But you write them off as just, well, that was just me, that was just my imagination, uh, or whatever. See, right now, I like to use the illustration. This room is full of movies, it's full of sporting events, talk shows, music. There's all kinds of things going on in this room right now. There's signals going through the air. Now, if we were to take a television set, set it up, and turn it on, the television set's a receiver. It picks up the signals in this room that you cannot see with your natural eye and converts it into a form that you can see, right? Okay. Just as the television set has receiving equipment, God has given every one of us receiving equipment, okay? We have spiritual antennas to pick up what you cannot see with your natural eye and convert it into a form that you can see through the eyes of your spirit. In Hebrews chapter uh, 5, verse 14, Jonathan talked about this uh, last night. Excuse me. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, It says, um, but solid food is for the mature. In other words, how do you get mature eating solid food? What is a solid food? How do you get there? Because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Through practice, we have our senses trained. So, What is our receiving equipment? It's our five senses. In the context here, this is not talking about our physical senses. It's talking about our spiritual senses because it's talking about the discerning of spirits. It's talking about the discerning of good and evil. And through practice, through practice, we have our senses trained. What is practice? Well, it's trial and error. It's learning the hard way. It's making a lot of mistakes. It's learning from our mistakes, and we keep repeating it over and over and over until we get it, until we, until we get it down. That's what practice is. You know, it's interesting that in the world, we think nothing of practice. You know, we, that's normally, that's what we have to do to get ahead, right? It's the same with sports. You know, like say the Olympics are coming up, and, uh, you know, some athlete decides the week before the Olympics, you know, I think I'll go compete in the Olympics. Does that go, does that, no. No, what do they do? They spend a lifetime of preparation, of practice for an event that may last for one minute. And so if we do that on worldly things, what about spiritual things? What about things of the Spirit? Through practice, we have our senses trained to discern good and evil. Now, Just as we have five physical senses, we have five spiritual senses. And we have uh, the the counterparts. Oftentimes, you can't tell the difference which one is in operation. You can't tell if it's your natural physical senses or it's your spiritual senses. Take, for example, the sense of smell. Okay? So we have natural smell. We can smell aromas, fragrances, and, you know, that sort of thing. Okay? Okay? But what about the spiritual sense of smell? How many times have you been worshiping the Lord and all of a sudden you just feel, you smell the sweet fragrance, just like perfume or like somebody just dumped a bottle of perfume on them, you know, and you're looking around wondering where it came from and you poke the person next to you, do you smell that? And they don't smell anything. See, that happens all the time. You think you're smelling it with your natural physical nose, you're not. It's your spiritual sense of smell 
God is, is, is giving you that, that sweet fragrance of his presence that you can smell. In, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 14 to 15, basically it says that God manifests through us the sweet aroma of the heaven uh, of... <laughs> got to put my spectacles on. <clears throat> the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ, of Christ to God. See? So, you can smell with your spiritual nose and think you're smelling with your natural physical nose. Okay? What about, uh, what about hearing? We just we have natural hearing. We have spiritual hearing. That's obvious. I want you to do something for me. Keep your mouth closed. Don't say anything out loud. But I want you to say your name to yourself. Go ahead and do that. Okay. Did you hear yourself say your name to yourself? Yes. But you didn't hear with your natural physical ears, right? What did you, you heard with your inner hearing, you know, and, and we can refer to that as our, as our spiritual hearing. Well, the same way that you heard your, you say your name is the same way that you hear the voice of God. It's also the way you hear the voice of the devil. <laughs> and it's also here the way um, um, that you that you hear your own thoughts. In Mark chapter 4, verse 24, it says, take care of what you listen to. I used to think this was referring to our natural physical ears. Well, it's true. We got to watch. There's so much noise. There's so much junk going on out there. We got to watch what we listen to. But it goes way beyond that. Take care of what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you and more will be given you besides. What's that saying? Well, the, whatever you listen to is what you get. You buy into that, you become... Okay, so what about... So, so we know that applies to our natural physical ears, but what about our spiritual hearing? The exact same thing. What are your thoughts? You hear your thoughts all day long. What direction are they going in? You see, you become a product of your thought life, right? So take care of what you listen to Okay? Now, what about seeing? Just as we have natural physical sight, so we have spiritual sight. Um, in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Run with endurance the race set before you, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Well, is that talking about your natural physical eyes or your spiritual sight? It's talking about your spiritual sight. There's no, how are you going to keep fix your eyes on Jesus, you know, all the time? You can't do that. It doesn't work that way, does it? You know, when uh, Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he quoted David. In, uh, <clears throat> in Acts chapter 2, verse 25, Peter said of David, where, where David said, I saw the Lord always in my presence, for he is at my right hand that I not be shaken. Stop and think about this. David saw the Lord always in his presence. So is he talking about his natural physical eyes or is he talking about his spiritual sight? He's talking about his spiritual sight. In um, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Now, does your, does your heart have physical eyes? No. So what's it talking about? It's talking about spiritual sight. Gabriel, come up here. I'll use you as an example. Okay, turn around. Okay, no, 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 just like, yeah, face them, just like that. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> now, did you feel that? I did, yes. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I was going to hit you harder if you didn't. Oh, thank God. Okay, now, I inflicted great pain on you because it hit you physically, right? So you have feeling, yeah. right? Can you experience pain without anybody physically hitting you? Yes. So do we have all five senses on the spiritual level as well as on the natural physical level? Yes, we do. Thank you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you later. <laughs> uh, Bob Jones is a good friend of mine. And uh, I heard him say one time, he said, you can see with your ears. And I, <laughs> and I, I looked at him and I said, Yeah. I can, I can see with my ears. He said, yeah. He said, you, you can see with your ears. Got real quiet and he said, donut. Uh, 
Okay? Now, so when I say the word donut, what do you see? You see a donut. Okay? We can relate all five senses to this because they're so interconnected, sometimes you don't realize which one is our operation. Because you can see with your ears. Now, uh, if, if your eyes are closed and somebody takes a donut and sticks it up under your nose and you smell the donut, what do you see? A donut. If somebody puts a donut in your hand, you feel that donut, what do you see? A donut. If you take a piece of that donut, your eyes are closed, put it in your mouth and you start eating it, what do you see? A donut. Okay, so do you see how that they're, they're interconnected? They're all intertwined? And so seeing is, it is multifaceted. It, it's perception on several different levels of exercising our spiritual senses, basically, is what it is. Now, in uh, Luke chapter 16, it tells the story of two people who died. There was a rich man and a poor man, okay? Uh, the poor man went to heaven, the rich man went to hell. Now, they're both dead. D-E-D, dead, okay? Now, what happens to your physical senses when you die? They die. They, your, your physical senses cease to exist when you physically die, okay? So they have no physical senses whatsoever. But the Bible says that in hell, the rich man looked up into heaven. He saw the poor man up there with Abraham. He said, Abraham, send that poor man down here with a drop of water. I'm burning up in agony in these flames. Abraham said, no, sorry, can't do that. You both died. It's too late now. You know, you can't switch sides. You, you know the story. Okay. The guy in hell saw. He heard. They carried on a conversation. He had feeling. He was burning up in agony. He had taste. He wanted a drop of water, right? Right? So he had five spiritual senses that were active after death. Your spiritual senses live on throughout eternity. Your physical senses die when you die. So I say, let's learn to activate our spiritual senses right here, right now. Why wait till we get to heaven? Okay? Let's experience it right now. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to do. Uh, uh, today. Now, um, people often ask me, they say, how, how do you see angels? Do you, do you, do you see them like people? Like, like I'm looking at you and you're looking at me. Well, yes, I have seen them that way. Not real often, but I have, but so have you. You say, well, no, not me. Yes, you. Yes, I would venture to say every person in this room has seen an angel in the natural physical realm with their natural physical eyes. <clears throat> so you say, well, well, what are you talking about there? Well, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2 says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by it some have entertained angels, but they weren't even aware of it. Now, if you entertained an angel and you weren't aware of it, you wouldn't know it. Right? But if you entertained an angel and you knew it was an angel, you would know it. <laughs> this is very basic, what we're talking about here. <clears throat> so, if you can entertain an angel and not know it, you don't know it. You don't know that you entertained an angel. Right? Are you, is everybody with me? Okay. So, um, we were on our way down in, in, into Mexico. A thousand miles down into Mexico. We were in our car. The sidewall of the tire blew out. Okay? It could not be repaired. Our spare tire was losing air. We had to put air in about every two hours to keep that up. We are in this little dinky town out in the middle of nowhere. We went all over this little town looking for a tire for our car. No, there was not one tire in the whole town that would fit our car. We were, we were in a pickle. So, uh, that night, Kathy and I prayed. We said, God, send somebody to help. Lord, show us where we can get a tire for this car. 
The next day, we're standing on the street, and this man walked up to us, and he said, can I help you? And I said, well, yeah, we need a tire. He said, I know just the place. I'll go with you. He gets in the car. He directs us out to Scariesville, outside of town out there. And we pull up this place that had tires piled up everywhere. They had the tire. He oversaw, made sure they did everything right. Made, counted the change, make sure that all of that was done right. He said, now take me back where you picked me up. We took him all the way back. We got within a couple of blocks. He said, why don't you just pull over right here and let me out? We pulled over. It was a, it was a concrete plaza area. There were no people, no trees. There was nothing, okay? He gets out of the car. And uh, so, we, you know, Kathy and I just kind of looked at each other and we thanked him. And, you know, we looked back like that. And he completely disappeared, she actually opened the door of the car to see if he was hiding beside the car. He completely disappeared. And then it was like, duh, that was an angel. See, at the time, when you're going through all that, it's, you, don't, you don't even think.